Welcome to this Junior Cycle Higher Level Maths revision video where we're going to revise simultaneous equations. We're going to focus on solving two equations with two different variables or unknowns. We're going to look at a few different methods of doing this. The first method will be elimination, then by equating like variables, using substitution, graphically, and finally we'll look at an example that contains fractions. So example one, we're going to solve these simultaneous linear equations um, using elimination. Now, this is probably the most standard method to solving simultaneous equations and your go-to. Any other methods that I show in this video, they will work in specific circumstances. So let's look at this one. This is probably the most important. So the first thing I do is I always label my equations. This allows you to keep track of it, but also anyone correcting your work to keep track. So then we put one equation over the other. So I get 3x plus 6y equals 54. That's equation one. And 2x plus 3y equals 29. What we're trying to do is to get one of those unknowns, one of those variables to eliminate, to disappear. Remember, because I have an equation, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Equation is all about the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So once you keep that balance, you can change it. So um, if we look at the x's, in order for the x to cancel or to go to zero, uh, the 3x will have to change to 6x and the 2x will have to change to 6x. So I'll have to multiply both of my equations by a number. If I look at the y's, well, if I multiply the second equation by 2, then the 3y becomes a 6y. So that's the way I'm going to go because it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to leave equation 1 exactly as it is. And then for equation 2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it not just by a 2, because if I just multiply it by 2, I have 6y and 6y. Um, that will give me 12y. I want to eliminate the y. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to make it a negative. So what I want is for the letters to have the same number in front, but different signs. So like I said, equation one, we're not changing. 3x plus 6y equals 54. Now, equation two, absolutely everything is being multiplied by a negative two. So 2x by negative 2 is a minus 4x. 3y by a negative 2 minus 6y equals, and 29 by a minus 2 is minus 58. So I have changed the equation, but I've kept the balance. I've made sure that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are still equal because I multiply absolutely everything by that negative two. And now what I do, I just draw a line under it and I go back to the old-fashioned way that you would have learned in primary school to add. We literally add down the columns. So I have a 3x take away a 4x, so I get a minus 1x or simply a minus x. I have a 6y, take away a 6y, that's a 0. Now, I'm not going to bother to write in 0y's or a plus 0 or anything like that. I simply cross them out. And that is the elimination. That is what is being eliminated. I'm getting rid of one of my unknowns. And then 54, take away 58 gives me a minus 4. Now, to finish that off, I always want x equals. So I'm going to divide both sides by a minus 1. So I get x equals 4. Now, I need to find x and y. I have found my x, so now I go back to either equation. I'm just going to go back to equation 1. And I'm going to take this and put in the value for x that I now know. So instead of 3x, I'm doing 3 times 4, because I know x is 4. Plus 6y equals 54. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 6y equals 54. I take away a 12 from both sides. So I take away that 12. So I get 6y equals 42. And then to get y on its own, I'm dividing both sides by 6. So 6y is equal 42. So 1y is going to equal 7. And we can write that answer as a point because anytime we work with simultaneous equations, 
what we're really doing is finding a point of intersection between two lines. Now, we can be asked this question in an algebra context, so where they're not talking about lines at all, but that is what it represents. By writing your answer as a point, you'll always remember to go back and get the second piece because that's something that students often forget to go back and get that second piece. So getting in the habit of writing your answer as a point will really, really help you and ensure that you always go back and get the second part. Now let's take a look at a, at a different method we could use to solve simultaneous equations. And this is called equating like terms. So look at our equations here. Y is equal to 3x plus 4 and Y is equal to 2x plus 10. We could very easily use our elimination here. However, if you notice, both of our equations are given as Y equals this and Y equals this. So if y is equal to 3x plus 4 and y is also equal to 2x plus 10, by our logical reasoning, we could also say then that 3x plus 4 must be equal to 2x plus 10. So this is equating like terms. So we're equating the y's. So the value for y from the first equation and the value for y in the second equation. So now we just need to work with this. So first of all, we're going to subtract a 2x from both sides. So I get 3x minus 2x plus 4 equals 10. Cleaning that up, I get x. And I also want to subtract a 4 from both sides. I get 10 minus 4 and we get x equals 6. Now we can go back to either one of our equations and substitute in. So we're going to work with y is equal to 3x plus 4 and sub in 3 times, sorry, y is equal to 3 times 6 plus 4, y is equal to 18 plus 4, y is equal to 22. Just like before, what I would advise is for you to write this in the form of a point 622 and that's a great habit to get into to make sure you don't forget to go back to sub in to find that second variable. So now let's take a look at example three. We want to solve the following simultaneous equations and we're going to use substitution. So substitution is suitable if you're given one of your equations with the variable written in terms of the other variable. So in this case for um, equation two we have y written in terms of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to take equation 1, which is 2y is equal to x plus 1, and we're going to substitute in, instead of our y, we're going to sub in 4x minus 10. So that's coming from equation 1 is equal to x plus 1. We multiply that out, we get 8x minus 20 is equal to x plus 1. We're going to subtract an x from both sides, minus 20 equals 1, so that gives us 7x minus 20 equals 1. And now we're going to add a 20 to both sides, which gives us 1 plus 20, so 7x equals 21. Dividing both sides by 7, we get x equals 3. So just like before, we're going to go back to either equation. Um, I'm going to take equation 2 because there is no coefficient of y, so it'll be a little bit easier to work with. So y is equal to 4x minus 10 is 4 times 3 minus 10, which is 12 minus 10, which gives us 2. And that gives us the second variable, which is y. So just like before, what I would advise you to do is write this in the form of a point so you never lose uh, any of the variables. And this will help as you move into the harder questions that you see at Leaving Cert higher level. So example four is if we were talking about two linear equations, how would we solve them graphically? So we're going to link a little bit to coordinate geometry of the line here. If you have your log tables, you can take a look at page 18. And on page 18, there is a formula for the equation of the line. And that formula is y equals mx plus c. And the letters, what they stand for, m is your slope. 
So my slope of this is 3. And C is what's called the y-intercept. So it's 0, 4 is where that line crosses the y-axis. Similarly here, my slope is 2. Okay, so the number just in front of the x. And my y-intercept is 0, 1. So based on that C. So when I have linear equations, I know two things very quickly. I know the y-intercept and I also know the slope. You could also work out a second point, depending on how you like to plot these. So let's find um, the x-intercept or where it crosses the x-axis. So what we're going to do, we're going to let uh, y equal 0 for both of these and see what happens to get us another point. So I'm going to have 0 equals 3 x plus 4 so I get 3x equals minus 4 x is equal to minus 4 over 3 not a great point it's not going to be very nice to plot but we can do it 2x plus 1 uh, so 2x equals minus 1 x equals minus a half so while you're drawing this if you take a look at it you might want to space these out so that you have three or six spaces between each of the units so you can draw this accurately so our points in this case is minus i'm going to write it one and a third zero just so you have a better sense of where it is on the axis and this is minus a half zero so you can always draw your line using the two pieces of information we got initially, so the slope and the point. Or if you prefer, you can use two points, which will be this point here and the second point and this point here and our point. So you would draw your x and my axis and you would graph it. And what we should hopefully see is something like this. Okay, so you have your two lines here, which have been plotted. So I have one in green and one in red. And what I'm going to do to make it a little bit clearer, and what you should always get in the habit of doing, is label each of your lines. So the green line is y is equal to 3x plus 4, and the blue line is y is equal to 2x plus 1. So we're trying to solve this equation. So what we're actually doing anytime we solve a simultaneous equation, is we're trying to find the point of intersection. So if we take a look at this graph, we have to see where do the two lines intersect or meet. And it happens at that point there. And that point, if you read from your axis, is actually minus 3, minus 5. Now, a lot of people find the drawing very cumbersome to do, but this is a great method if you already have a graph in the question. So it's not something to forget about. Sometimes a question will specify using your graph, find the point of intersection, and sometimes the question might say verify that algebraically, which would mean using any one of the other three ways that we looked at, which were elimination, equating like terms, and um, substitution. 